So word on the street says that the bull market is about to happen. Apparently, cryptocurrency is cyclical. It's consistent and it's going to start making some interesting moves. Now, I'm all for the bull market. Then we've got a spanner in the works with good old Michael Burry putting up a couple of short options favoring lower prices on the Nasdaq and the S&P. That puts things into perspective because the legacy markets will always dictate where money is going to go. Hopefully, Bitcoin can do its own thing, but history has it that Bitcoin kind of follows what the Nasdaq and the S&P does. But so far, Bitcoin's been holding out, and in today's video, I'm going to give you some levels that you need to be mindful of because if Bitcoin does break beyond these levels, it's going to be favorable to the upside only for a short period of time because Bitcoin's been bringing us that flavor, that stop run flavor. Grab the liquidity and go. So, Let's have a conversation, guys. So we get it all started off with Bitcoin on a four hour time frame. And what's important is you need to make the distinction on what you're doing with Bitcoin, whether you're a day trader or a holder. Now, me, I'm a day trader. I trade all sorts of assets, I trade Nasdaq, S&P, Euro, GBP, USD, dollar, yen. Sometimes I trade a bit of gold. Bitcoin moves too slow for me. I'm a scalper. I need that quick movement fast in, fast out. I get that consistency with all the other legacy assets like NASDAQ and S&P, Forex, you name it. That doesn't mean that I don't understand what's going on in Bitcoin from a price action perspective. Why? Because they kind of make it obvious at times. And the only thing that's left for you to do is to say, you know what? I believe that this is going to be the case. Bitcoin's going to move up to this point or move to the next zone. Let me show you something. In front of you is an image that I shared to the patrons of the channel talking about where I expected Bitcoin to go yesterday morning. So the start of Monday. Now, Monday was a free day in the marketplace. There were no news announcements that could affect anything. So we were anticipating that Bitcoin was going to make a move higher based on the structure that I had marked off in this chart right here. What you can see is down here, Mr. Market Maker had initially ran for the liquidity and came away from the psychological range, which you can see right here. So he started the false move at the beginning of the week. The green vector candle and the stopping volume candle is a clue. It's not a rejection. It's a clue that they went to sweep the liquidity and they were done with this zone. This is the, tr the move itself is designed to make retail traders believe that prices are going to collapse. You look left and you can see they come back down into this vector candle zone just to the right. If you can see it on the blue one right here inside of that zone they came into that area and then of course they shifted out to the upside and then recovered the red vector candle that was sat inside of this zone right here okay now going into the price action itself going to the one hour time frame and you can see what bitcoin ended up doing from that point a clean move up recovering the red vector candle in this zone right here okay they came back and recovered this vector candle region right here but what was it that was giving me the idea that they were going to try and do this? Well, you've got to understand, look at the way Bitcoin has been moving. All it's been doing is been spiking up to come back down. The red vector candles are leaving us clues as to what could be happening next. Now, if Bitcoin can sustain this area right here, logic would say that Bitcoin is on its way to come back to another vector candle zone. Now, for my guys on the daily time frame, as we spoke about yesterday, we're looking towards this area. But the problem is this whole zone is consistent with stops. So there's lots of traders up here. They're trapped in margin positions. They may be waiting for breaking even. They might want to get out. They might want to add to their position. And this is why we're seeing Bitcoin spike up to come down, spike up to come down, spike up to come down. Because market makers grabbing that liquidity. You only go over to the high block itself and you can see Look at the collection of liquidation points. We're starting to see price getting closer and closer towards certain areas. You've got this liquidation point of 30,450. Then you've got one all the way down at 28,950. Down below there, you've got a 28,350. So it's like there seems to be this inconsistency among retail traders because they're trying to work out where Bitcoin's going to go next, which is why you're starting to see Bitcoin making these bold moves up and down, making these stop runs and then back into it again because they're just grabbing traders' liquidations. Now, the bigger pool of liquidity would sit at the top side right here between the 31,466 going into the 30,446. 
that's the one area that's got an imbalance in the chart that we would naturally expect Bitcoin to head towards. Now, we've got data coming out this week. Going into the calendar, you can see bright as day that we've got Canadian dollar CPI data coming out. But today we have the Empire State Manufacturing Index and, of course, retail sales and core retail sales for the US dollar that will be coming out rare right about half past eight in the morning US time. So that'll be before the market opens, in essence. Now, check this out. We've got an article here. Kevin Kelly believes that the bull market is about to occur based off the data of the ISM, which is the manufacturing index. Scroll down into the article, he goes on to say, is the bear market nearing its end? So Bitcoin's price year a year over the US ISM. And you can see what we've got right here. Let me just zoom in for this bad boy. You can see that for every time the ISM effectively peaks out, right? Everything starts to move up or Bitcoin starts to make a nice little move. He didn't make reference to the W formation there. And he didn't make reference to the W formation there. Come on, man. The data's there. I get it. But the pattern is there as well. Jokes aside, ladies and gentlemen, he's putting two and two together, believing that the ISM, which is going to reflect on whether or not Bitcoin is going to continue back up. So we take that idea and think, OK, then let's go back into the chart and think, right, do we have the possibility of Bitcoin continuing this move to the upside? Well, look, the 50 EMA seems to be holding out very well for Bitcoin. And like I said to you, if Bitcoin does break beyond this 50 EMA cloud, you're drawing out this zone. Mark this zone off. This is the top side of the cloud. This is the lower end of the cloud. You can see they're working that range pretty well. Traders are getting inconsistent. They're feeling impatient with the way Bitcoin's moving. Now, check this out. Whatever way Bitcoin breaks will, in essence, be a trap for the traders who have been watching this zone. OK, now all we need to do is think like this. If Bitcoin can succeed and break higher from this point, because Bitcoin's trading flat and sometimes it's pretty frustrating to trade Bitcoin. I'll be straight with you. That's why when I want to be trading, I'm trading NASDAQ and S&P. OK, and I'll tell you why. Look at NASDAQ. Beautiful flavor. What did we talk about yesterday? We wanted that 1528, 15,280. Well, yeah, they gave it to us in the start of the new session, came back into the vector candle recovery. Go and watch yesterday's little video that we did. Happy days, bringing it back down again, back into Vector Candle Recovery, leaving us the clue as to where they could end up later on today. These fast moves up. No time for consolidation, but that's the problem with low liquidity assets like Bitcoin. And yes, it is a low liquidity asset in comparison to the likes of the euro, the pound, the S&P, the Nasdaq, because it's a new asset class. We need a lot more money in crypto for Bitcoin to move. Because it's only Wall Street that's going to effectively move cryptocurrency. And that's my belief. Some people might think that's a load of shit. But OK, look at the market cap. Amazon's market cap is pretty much dwarfing cryptocurrency's market cap. So once we get an even distribution of market cap across big, bang, you know, big stocks, then we're in a good situation to say, yeah, maybe cryptocurrency has its worth. But right now, no one's trading crypto. We can see that. Check this out. Just this article right here, it is old, but July the 6th, quarterly Bitcoin volumes, spot trading volumes, look how low they are. And that's even with BlackRock trying to introduce this ETF. You go into Jenny data right here and you can see, look at what the volume's like over here on the right. Time now is at 10 to 10 in the morning. 8.4 million on futures. Everyone's awake. Cryptocurrency is awake. You know, people are still trading it. No one is asleep. The whole world is not asleep at the same time. Look at the volume. It's very minimal. Spot is embarrassing with 1.7 million on ETH. OK, even on Bitcoin futures, it's like 18 million. These are small figures, ladies and gentlemen. And if we just go into last night, 10 o'clock in the evening, even when the Asian session was on, very minimal volume. There's more volume collectively on altcoins than there is in Bitcoin. That's a problem. People are to believe Bitcoin's going to go higher. We need to see the volume. And again, the BlackRock ETF, that's going to stimulate cryptocurrency and give it access to the Wall Street money that we need. This is why you're seeing Bitcoin trading like this. Makes a nice little move up and then it only comes back down. And the thing is, people are impressionable with it. 
They think Bitcoin's going to pump to the moon. And yes, look, articles like this, I'm down for. Because you then say to yourself, you know what? Maybe that's a possibility, man. Look at what Bitcoin did before then in 2015. Look what it did in 2020. But look at where we were in the world, or should I say economically speaking, when Bitcoin made these pumps. That's the thing that you've got to have in your mind. We've got other issues at hand. If Bitcoin's going to follow what Wall Street does, in essence, the Nasdaq and the S&P and the stock market, well, then we've got a little bit of a problem with Burry now opening a lot of options to favor lower prices in the Nasdaq and the S&P. Now, let's just put two and two together. Why would he be doing that? Well, look at it like this. If we just go over to the Nasdaq itself, it will put things into perspective for you. The article goes on to say that the Nasdaq is up 39%. That means there are stocks and shares in the Nasdaq that have got mad gains. Just look at this bad boy. It hasn't stopped moving. And this is what we're talking from December. Look at that. That's an index representing stocks in the US stock market, the tech stock market. Look at the value that is inside these stocks. There's going to be profit taking, ladies and gentlemen. So maybe this time, Michael might have a point about being bearish on the NASDAQ and the S&P. We go over to the S&P itself and you can see the same story. Now, if you remember, I did a video on the market crash theory that the S&P was doing the same thing that they were doing back in 2007, 2008, when Michael Burry was building the shorts based on the subprime mortgage crisis. It kind of comes into perspective that we could be in the same story right now. There needs to be consolidation. If these guys have been selling into retail and retail is all happy days to the upside, this is the perfect time to buy everything back up and force price down lower. So if the S&P and the Nasdaq are going to go down, what do we need to see Bitcoin doing? Well, look, Bitcoin has done a good job. So far, so good. Given that the Nasdaq and the S&P have been moving up and down and they've been progressively moving down, Bitcoin has done well to hold out. This is why people are trying to think maybe Bitcoin is a hedge. Because if Bitcoin can sustain the drops on the Nasdaq and the S&P, then I'll be more confident to say that Bitcoin is a hedging tool, which naturally is going to make investors turn to Bitcoin, which naturally will then bring Bitcoin's price back up. That's how it's going to work. What do you think gold is? What do you think the yen is? The dollar. These are safe havens. You only have to look at the dollar itself to understand where traders' heads are at. Dollar's rising up. Traders aren't favoring exposure anymore. You go to the yields. Guys, like the yields are moving up. The government's trying to advertise, look, give us your money and we'll give you a return of 4.9% 4 .4 year on year. Or should I say over a two-year period? That's crazy. On a two-year. Doesn't make sense. That shows us that the yields are inverted. Now, of course, you've got to remember as well, when a currency, or should I say a country, has been increasing its interest rates quite significantly, that only promotes foreign investment to come into that country. That's why the dollar is rising, because higher interest rates means that companies that come from overseas or investors, they put their money into dollar-based products, they're going to get a good return because the interest rates are higher. That's why banks always do well when interest rates are high. Because people have to still service their mortgages and their liabilities. Now, what we've got to be mindful of is the Nasdaq and the S&P have been building up the amount of days that there's been a lot of selling. OK, now they can't just sell the market off straight away unless there's a black swan event. But it builds up until it gets enough people in retail to believe that, you know what? It's time to sell. That's the time that they buy back into Bitcoin's price. We look at it and we say to ourselves, well, what could we get this week that could trigger? a big sell-off or a big buy. Think about it. Bitcoin has been spiking up. Look at all these areas. It's been spiking up, come down, spiking up, coming down, spike up, down. All right. Bitcoin has been stuck inside of this boring zone and the 50 EMA is flat as a pancake, not interested in trading Bitcoin. Now for a holder, he's going to be looking at this saying, well, look, by the utility of the hybrid system, I would expect Bitcoin to come down. Why? To fill this imbalance. So maybe a lot of people are waiting for prices to come down. Maybe today's data and the Empire State Manufacturing Index, it's showing that there's going to be a contraction. It's going to be coming with a lower reading of minus 0.9. And what does this tell us? 
shows us here level of diffusion index based on surveyed manufacturers in the New York state. So this is why traders care. It's a leading indicator of economic health. Businesses react quickly to market conditions and changes in their sentiment can be an early signal for future economic activities such as spending, hiring and investment. It takes into consideration about 200 manufacturers in the New York state, which asks respondents to rate the relative level of general business conditions. So 200 manufacturers, they ask the question, hey, how do you think business is going? Uh, it's not looking too good, man. We had to get rid of a few people. We've had a slowdown on our orders. Okay, that's not good. And if you've got 200 purchasing managers all saying the same thing, that kind of tells you that the economy overall ain't looking so good. This is where the Fed comes in and says, hold on, right? We've got a high interest rates right now. We're trying to work that inflation is going to be coming down. But we had a reading just recently that showed it was going up. We wanted it to be 3%. It came in at 3.2. We projected 3.3. Is it good? Is it bad? Don't care. We still want 2% we're probably going to keep increasing our interest rates yet again this is where we get into the realm of a man-made recession because if the economy isn't expanding that only tells us that a recession is on its way now they are saying that the recession could actually happen in the end of 2023 start of 2024 but they keep on moving the goalposts but ultimately the best thing for you to do ladies and gentlemen is to just focus on the charts stick to that idea and you'll be safe in understanding that the chart will always tell you what the market thinks. We've seen it too many times. The Fed's increasing interest rates. Oh my God, it's going to be bad for businesses. Well, businesses have been booming. They've been shooting up and the NASDAQ has represented that and the S&P. Yet Bitcoin hasn't really done much. And that's pretty frustrating given that we do want to see Bitcoin move higher. Okay. All you've got to do, guys, is just focus on the yields right here. Take the yields. Understand the relationship with investors, okay? People are not putting their money to the government bonds. We said that they're going to come and recover this gap. They're on their way to recover this zone. The yields are going to come down. Sorry, the bonds are going to come down. Even big players are actually short in the treasury bonds. Bori is short in the NASDAQ and the S&P. That's like the sentiment across the board is, forget those guys, don't worry about it. But the NASDAQ and S&P are up significantly so there's going to be some profit taking. People will call it a bearish market, but it's just consolidation. Bring it back down, load up some more positions and then get ready for another move to the upside. When we look at Bitcoin, the only thing that we can do with Bitcoin right now is only take advantages, take advantage of the plays that we see in the chart in the current range. Bitcoin's ranging out. So you go into smaller time frames and then say to yourself, OK, then what can I anticipate with Bitcoin? We look at the chart right now and we can see brightest day. We have got some interesting zones right here. So that tells us that there's going to be some movement towards this area to suggest that there are traders up here trapped in longs. They could go for some liquidations. 29,700 tells us there's liquidity up there. What have we got here? 29,900. We've got $3.5 billion worth of short liquidations. So let's just put two and two together and assume that if Bitcoin can hold this zone at the psychological range, we would naturally expect it to try and move back up again. News announcements at half past one could actually put a spanner in the works. If the manufacturing index comes in and shows it's a promise and it's actually going up, even though they're projecting it to be lower, then that's going to be a bit of a sad story for Bitcoin because Bitcoin will end up dropping because investors are thinking, you know what, it's happy days for the dollar, US dollar, quickly put your money into dollar. And then you look at the likes of dollar yen making its way towards a very interesting zone. The 145 region itself is going to grab, or should I say, the Japanese. The government's going to start having to do something to the Japanese yen if dollar keeps on going up against the yen. They can't, well, they do want it to be strong, but not that strong because it's going to hurt them really badly. Ladies and gentlemen, mad love and respect. I hope I haven't chewed your ear off, but I've given you, I hope, enough information to keep you aligned with your way of trading in the financial markets. Mad love and respect. Take care of yourselves. Peace.